Masters, our next contestant is Brett Allen Morgan, The Night of the Owls. The Night of the Owls, Brett Allen Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. The tale I'm about to tell will most likely give you goosebumps the size of golf balls. So as if you find yourself a little spooked as we tiptoe into the world of the supernatural and old superstition, I encourage you to cling to the safety of the uplifting message this story brings. Now before I introduce you to our main character, let me ask you a question. Who do you know that is written in your book of life, leaving that indelible mark across the pages of your soul? If you were to ask me that question, I would undoubtedly tell you, Maria Antonucci. Maria was this robust Italian woman with thick curly black hair and warm inviting olive eyes. She was a devout Catholic whose connection to the spiritual side of life was so powerful that I'm quite certain she could have made the Pope himself a little bit jealous. And she was always doing amazing things. In fact, some of them, to me, borderline miracles. But nothing compares to what she did on the night of November 23rd, 2008. It still sends shivers down my spine. It was one of those crisp, clear, moonlit nights, a Sunday night about 10 o'clock. And my wife and I were snuggling on the couch in our cozy living room. And, you know, I was sort of dozing in and out. And I was almost asleep when all of a sudden my cell phone blasted a ringtone that ripped right through me like thunderbolts from the fingers of God himself and lifted me off the couch and sent me fumbling for the phone. And I grabbed the phone... And the woman on the other end gave me the news. And as I heard this news, this haunting melody began to travel through my mind. And I, I hitched a ride on it all the way back to 1975, when I was a young, 11-year-old, impressionable young man. And that's the summer that I met Maria Antonucci, or Aunt Maria as we call her. You see, our family had fallen on hard times and Aunt Maria had taken us in. Now, little did I know that this would be the summer that I would form a lifelong connection to her compassion and her counsel and her counsel and her encouragement. Little did I know that that summer she would plant seeds deep into my fragile mind of wisdom that would take root and grow into the branches of my character. And so as I was recalling these early days with Aunt Maria, that, that haunting tune kept growing and growing and growing in my mind. And it was growing and it was getting louder and louder and louder still till I could almost hear it. Can you hear it? That song was everywhere that summer. It was, it was in the cars we'd ride around. It was at the pools I'd swim. It was when I'd get dressed in the morning, it was there. And I was completely captivated by the lyrics that spoke of ghostly images and haunting ancient superstition and they told the story of a young woman who died while looking for her pony as he ran off into the snowstorm and it's told from the perspective of her young lover who is quite certain he's receiving spooky messages that she'll be one day returning on her pony wildfire to take him with her and you know I could just see him laying there at night by his bed listening waiting as he'd sing. There's been a hoot owl howling outside my window now for six nights in a row and on wildfire we're both gonna go and I can just see it now. They be riding wildfire and I remembered that it was Aunt Maria who explained to me that in ancient civilizations they believed that the owl was able to carry messages from the world of the dead to the world of the living. And she knew that fascinated me. 
And so as that melody faded, it dropped me off back at the phone conversation. And the woman on the other end was my mother. And the news she was telling me was that Aunt Maria had passed away just moments before. And that, my friends, is when it got freaky. Because as my mother was explaining to me the details of the funeral and whatnot, out of this ear I hear, hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. And I said, Mom, do you remember that, that song, Wild Fire? She said, yeah. I said, do you remember that Aunt Maria and I talked with the owl thing? She said, yeah. I said, I'm not kidding you, Mom. There's an owl outside the... No, wait, Mom. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. There's two of them. No, Mom, there's three. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo. There's four. Mom, there's seven. Mom, you are not going to believe this. There are owls everywhere. They're in the trees. They're on the roof. They're flying by the window, Mom. I can't... And this went on for 15 minutes. And then, as if on cue, one by one, they flew away. I hung up the phone, and it got eerily silent. And so curious as what I might find, I ran outside. And sure enough, on the top of my hundred-year-old barn, right on the peak, silhouetted in the moonlight, was one big owl. And it turned to me, and it said, hoo-hoo, 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 and flew off. And I just knew that was Aunt Maria, saying she would be my spiritual grandmother into eternity. And then nothing would separate us. So the next time you hear an owl hoot, or you hear that song, Wildfire, on the radio, ask yourself, is it possible? Maybe, just maybe, in some magical, mystical way, that we could connect to those we love, even through the boundaries of life and death? I think so. God bless you.